Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to get into the new release of GIMP 2.10.20. There are two and a half good <laughs> filters that I'd like to touch on. Let's get to them. Okay, so once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in for another video. If this is your first time. I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies so you can know about them and make good use of them. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity, go back and watch some of those videos to get some background. Uh, we touch on a lot of different technologies, whether it's image alteration tools, video editors, screen capture tools, all kinds of things. So go do that. I've touched on GIMP before. We've done comparisons with it. I wanted to focus exclusively on GIMP, uh, the latest release, which is 2.10.20 today, and touch on the uh, new filters that are out there. There's uh, actually three new filters, but I'm kind of calling this two and a half because one of them is a little wonky. I'll let you be the judge of it and I'll let you see what happens um, but we're going to get to those and dig into that and see so thank you so much for joining in let's do this and see what's out there so i'm showing the release notes here there are some other things but i really felt like these new filters were at least the most noteworthy of the bunch there are some bug fixes and things um take a i'll read through that i'll put that in the description below uh, so you can see the kind of the full picture i'm going to focus in on what i felt was kind of like the most Gee whiz wow for this, um, so we can get right into that. So let's drop into GIMP here and do this. And I'm gonna start off with highlighting actually the vignette filter, which is a nice and welcome addition. Uh, leading up to this, a lot of what we had to do, it's the same with Krita, is we had to do a gradient and kind of cut a hole in it and, and blur it and blur it and blur it, and uh, it was kind of painful. So this, is a very welcome addition, uh, the vignette control. And I'll highlight this as well in that with each filter now, GIMP has included the blending options, uh, which can take this in a variety of different ways. Uh, these should be very familiar if you've used them before. It can do a lot of different things. And these are kind of like pseudo masking, which makes them really cool to apply all with the filters. You can multiply the effect of them. You can overlay it. You can make it additive. There's some really interesting things you can do uh, with those blending modes and right on top of the filter. So that's a very intriguing thing to see. And you see that kind of approach with other things too. I see that in um, the other uh, tonal controls that we've touched on, Dark Table. We've seen that in Raw Therapy. So again, this is not a new idea, but it's good to see this being developed and brought into uh, the GIMP uh, interface here. So that's pretty cool. So vignette. The controls here are very straightforward, which again is always good to see that there's some good thought into making it easy for the user uh, to figure this out. Uh, graphical is always very nice. Uh, there's always the um, the math version of this too, so you really have a lot of control either way. Uh, those are both really excellent, so you can get precise or you can do it free form with by hand, uh, depending on how you work. Some people like that precision of numbers, others will just do it by eye and they'll know you know when it looks right. So those are great options to see as interface controls. And those are those are uniform to the filters I've noticed now that I'm about to touch on. So it's all very good. Uh, so that's very easy to look at and apply. Split view is really cool. You can compare and, and adjust along the way. And again, some very good thought built into that. Also, I kind of skipped past it. There's a way to do presets with these as well, so you can make them reusable. Uh, scalable features are awesome. I love that. Check that out when uh, when you have a moment on, but no, it's there. All right, so vignette is the first one. The second full one that I really wanted to touch on um, is uh, getting into the Gaussian options. Um, and this is where it gets a little tricky in that um, it's, Gaussian is very CPU intensive, so the first one is good. <laughs> it renders very cleanly. Uh, the second one is where we kind of get into some some challenge here. Uh, select that's selected. That's the next one. We're going to look at uh, focus blur. Now, again, this is something that you're probably familiar with if you've used Snapseed. Uh, this is a, an up and coming thing that we've noticed come into other tools. Uh, Paint.net has been playing around with something with this. Somebody built a plugin for that as well. Um, again, this is a really welcome addition. Uh, this is great for setting focal points uh, within a picture so that you can 
force the eye to see what you want to without necessarily changing up the whole image. Um, and again, there's a lot of choices about how you can actually do all this stuff. You can play with the math a little bit and uh, adjust this as you really need to. So there's some really, really cool stuff you can do uh, to make uh, enhancements to your image using the focus blur option where it's kind of a gradient of blur. Uh, that's really, really neat. And then that brings us into the last one, kind of the, the half one <laughs> that I mentioned before. Uh, this is the one where, honestly, it choked up my computer. <laughs> And every time I try to use it, it spins CPU up to 100%, and I just can't seem to find a way around that. So I don't honestly know if that's perhaps some kind of bug I'm hitting, or if the operation is just simply too intense for the graphics card and the things that I'm running in this computer. And this is not a new laptop. I've said that in many other videos, um, and I make that distinction so you can know about tools. If you're coming at this from an older computer, what will still work, obviously. Mine is struggling a little bit with this particular update, and I've seen in other programs, that's not, I'm not going to pick on GIMP for that. I've seen that in other tools. I've seen that in Krita, where they do uh, kind of these, these flavors of Gaussian blur that rely heavily on CPU, and it just always chokes my computer to death when they do that. So um, at least know that in this case, the way the math computation is working out for selective Gaussian blur, that can happen. <laughs> Again, I can't prove it out because I'm coming at this with one computer. Um, so it may be a bug, might just be my resource, not sure. I do really like the concept of this though. It has very interesting potential in that you could apply an effect against a mask or other layer here. It gives you an option to choose as you go or channel and apply the blur based on that concept. It's really neat that you could somewhat intelligently apply blur and only impact those areas without impacting the whole image. And again, I think this is a fantastic innovation. I, just, I wish I could see it work. <laughs> if you're looking to get more details on that, they do kind of give the, 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 the nickel tour version of it up here. And again, I, I love the idea of this. I just, I could not make it work. Go ahead and try it. Let me know how your results are because I would really love this to work and, and actually get through it. And I'm going to play with it a few more times. I've been messing around with it. And just every time I hit this dead end of 100% CPU and I can't get through that. So I'm really hopeful that that... Uh, actually works <laughs> but again the concept is so cool hence the half you know i love the idea i just can't seem to get it to actually flow with me and, and get the results back so those are the three additive filters um added options that i saw which i thought were just wow these are really interesting really want to check them out and mention them so you can know them and try them out and hopefully get some more value out of this gimp tool a lot of possibilities a lot of other things go watch the other videos we've done on gimp and other tools so you can get a good sense of it if this was helpful to you please do give me a thumbs up so i know what content to focus on i know there's a lot of questions that have come around with uh, other things which i will promise i will get to with blender more about natron go check out that video it's really awesome motion compositing tool open source and um also consider subscribing so you don't miss out on these fantastic things and uh, consider joining the community and getting involved and leaving comments i really love the comments and i'm trying my best to get through them a lot of a lot of people are involved which is awesome but it's a double-edged sword where it's just hard to keep pace with everybody so know that i'm going to get to you and please do uh, keep talking those those conversations in a family friendly way so we can uh, keep this open to everybody so thank you so much i will see you at the next video